Rodents are a nuisance to most people. Annoying pests that eat and spoil our clothes and food and destroy our homes and highly valued personal belongings. They intrude on our personal space. Unfortunately, rodents are everywhere, except for the snow-covered regions of the world. A select subset of species has become the ultimate mammalian weed, living in almost every habitat on Earth. They adapt well to environments significantly altered by humans. Rodents, or rats or mice, have played a central role in human life for thousands of years and comprise perhaps the most important family of mammals. There are more than 2,270 species of rodents. 42% of all mammal species are classified as rodents. Surprisingly, only 10% of the different species of rodents are pests in agriculture. Majority play an important role in the food chain. In some cases, they become important engineers of the ecosystem. Their burrows and trails influence the flow of water and nutrients at a local scale. Their collection and hoarding of seeds in a forest can lead to new trees sprouting away from the competition of other trees. They play an important role in regulating the population growth of some weeds and insects because they are an important part of their diet. Therefore, many species of rats need to be protected for us to have a healthy, functioning ecosystem. The challenge is to develop ways to control the pests without greatly affecting those that are beneficial in our environment. These pest species, often known as public enemy number one, have three major impacts. They cause significant damage at any stage of a growing crop. They cause losses after harvest to stored grain and vegetables. Farmers are devastated because they have already invested their money and time in growing and harvesting the crop and preparing it for sale. And the last but often overlooked impact is that they affect the health of smallholder farmers. Rodents are carriers of at least 65 human diseases. Some 20 of these are severely unbearable and may lead to death. What is troubling is that most of these diseases can be readily treated by antibiotics if detected early. Too often though, the symptoms are confused with malaria, dengue, or seasonal flu. They are often left untreated or treated too late to prevent serious illness or death. According to rodent expert Dr. Grant Singleton, across Asia, rodents cause rice crop damage ranging from 5% in Malaysia to 17% in Java, Indonesia. A loss of 6% in Asia is enough rice to feed 230 million people, roughly the population of Indonesia, for 12 months. Rat damage is often patchy and as family rice plots are small, it is not unusual for farmers or villagers to lose half of their entire rice crop to rats. For subsistence farmers, this can be devastating. In Southeast Asia, the rice field rat, Ratus argentiventer, is the number one pre-harvest pest in Indonesia and is one of the top three pests in Vietnam and parts of the Philippines. In Lao PDR, a member of the Ratus Ratus complex of species sporadically causes tremendous problems over a large geographic scale, and Lao Aplan farmers consider rats as the problem they have least control over. In the uplands of Lao PDR, Bangladesh, Myanmar, and parts of India, rat populations occasionally erupt and cause massive problems. From 2007 to 2010, each of these countries has reported massive impacts of rodents on the livelihoods of smallholder farmers in the uplands. Recently, scientists have found convincing evidence linking the flowering and fruiting of specific species of bamboo every 48 to 50 years to vast rodent outbreaks in Mizoram, India, Chin State, Myanmar, and Chittagong Hill Tract, Bangladesh. By understanding how populations of specific rodent species interact, 
simple and environment-friendly methods can be developed to control rats in lowland irrigated rice crops. Each rodent pest species has different behavioral characteristics, breeding dynamics, and habitat preferences. Some species breed regularly, some breed throughout the year, and others breed at very specific times. The rice field rat, for example, breeds only when the rice is in the reproductive phase. If there is one planting season per year, they have one breeding season. If there are two, they will have two. And if they have three crops a year, they will have three breeding seasons. Female rats are pregnant for 21 days and can mate the day after they give birth. One female can give birth to 3 liters with 12 young per liter during a rice crop resulting in a total of 36 rats. These young will not breed until the next crop unless neighboring farmers plant their crops more than two weeks apart. This will extend the breeding season, allowing the rats from the first litter to also breed. Therefore, one adult female could potentially give birth to 120 rats in a single rice growing season. Scientists have also been studying where rats live at different times of the year in agricultural landscapes. This then enables them to target rat populations when they have aggregated in easily accessible habitats. Once the ecology of a major pest species is understood, scientists and extension specialists can work closely with farmers to develop ecologically sound, cost-effective management strategies that fit with usual farming practices, including traditional rat-catching methods. Studies in Indonesian and Vietnamese villages have clearly shown that rat populations can be successfully managed if farmers work together as a community, applying their control at the right time and in the right habitats. Such ecologically based actions have also led to a 50% reduction in the use of chemical rodenticides. Effective community actions include keeping irrigation banks less than 30 centimeters wide to make it difficult for rats to build nests. Conducting community campaigns using local methods to control rats within 30 days of planting the crop, which is before the main breeding season for rats in rice fields. These community actions should focus on village gardens, main irrigation channels, and roadsides where the rats gather in small corridors when the land is being plowed in preparation for planting. If control is left later, then rats would have already dispersed throughout the rice crops, making it much more time-consuming and costly to control them over a vast area. Cleaning up any grain spills at harvest and synchronizing planting so that crops are planted within two weeks of each other. Rats are highly mobile. They can travel a distance of one kilometer a night. If farmers do not act together and only one farmer is effective in controlling rats, then rats will invade his crop from the fields where no control was done. One simple technology added to the armory of rice farmers is a trap and fence system known as the Trap Barrier System or TBS. Used across much of Southeast Asia, the TBS comprises a plastic fence surrounding a small rice crop planted two to three weeks earlier than the surrounding crop with traps set into the plastic. Rats have a very well-developed sense of smell. At night, rats will be attracted to the smell of the early developing rice within the fence. This rice acts as bait. The rats reach the fence and then follow the line of the plastic until they reach a hole, which they enter to reach the rice. They are caught in the trap and removed the next morning. One TBS can protect up to 10 hectares. For smallholder farmers who have less than 2 hectares of rice, the TBS requires community action to share in the cost in daily checking of traps. Therefore, scientists refer to this method as Community Trap Barrier System. 
This method is very cost-effective for managing rat populations when there are losses of more than 10% in a specific season each year. However, in the lowlands of Myanmar, scientists found that the bandicoot rat, which is the main pest species, is not attracted to the traps in a TBS. Their behavior needs to be better understood and the weaknesses in their biology need to be identified. Similarly, in the upland rice environments, there is still much to learn about the breeding ecology, habitat use, and patterns of seasonal movements. So, one important finding from our research is that it's the breeding of the rodents which are driving the population dynamics in these outbreaks. It is not the normal mortality such as predators that are really driving those populations. So we need to focus then on factors which are going to minimise the breeding of rodents and this includes synchrony of cropping. And there's also research which is looking at some innovative methods of fertility control. That research results so far is promising, but we still have some more research to do. A deeper knowledge of the ecology of rats will help scientists develop effective ecologically based control of their populations. Armed with this knowledge, scientists can work closely with farmers to advise them when and where to control rats using their traditional catching methods. Farmers would no longer have to rely on expensive and dangerous chemicals that kill other mammals, birds, and predators that eat rats. Such chemicals are a last resort. The key to success in this battle against rats is coordinated community action every year. We need to be constantly vigilant because if we let our guard down, then the rats will quickly breed into alarming numbers, and public enemy number one will remain a menace to society. <laughs>